Welcome to the Ruckus Associate Smart Zone Administrator demonstration series for the Smart Zone OS 5 release. Smart Zone OS 5 is the network controller operating system that's available on Smart Zone 100 and Smart Zone 300 hardware platforms, and as we'll be discussing here, the Virtual Smart Zone Network Controller platform. This presentation describes the portal authentication using Hotspot WLANs on the Smart Zone Network Controller running Smart Zone OS 5. Hotspot also known as Whisper WLANs, are similar to regular web authentication WLANs uh, where a client trying to connect must be authenticated uh, through a, some sort of portal interface or, or login interface before they're allowed to have access to the network. Uh, the benefit of a hotspot is that it allows the functionality of a walled garden where we can allow those users to have access to a limited number of websites while they're not authenticated and they can still get to those things on your wireless network uh, without having to authenticate. This is common in some scenarios like hospitality industries where they might have you allow access to you know the chain's website or something along that lines or some travel websites and those are the only things available unless you authenticate and then if you pay for services on their Wi-Fi network uh, they'll give you some authentication credentials and allow you to access uh, the wide-ranging internet so that's just one example so let's take a look at how this is configured so here I am logged into a virtual smart zone high scale edition running smart zone OS 5. Uh, to configure the hotspot portal, the first thing we have to do is we have to come over here to services and profiles and we'll click on that and we need to go to hotspots and portals. Now it's the first option in the list, so it'll already be highlighted for us and we'll want to move over to the tab here for hotspot whisper tab. So once we're here, uh, depending on your login credentials, I'm logged in as a partner admin for a partner domain, so I can't create anything under the system domain. I have to navigate down through my partner domain to the subdomain and the zone where I want to create this portal at. So for me, it's this zone right here. And I'll go ahead and click the Create button. It'll also open up the dialog to create our hotspot portal. So these are all the options. We have general options, redirection, user session, local information and the walled garden and we'll walk through each of these as we go through this demonstration. So the general options we really just have to give this a portal name so we'll just call this the uh, hotspot portal. Nice and easy uh, we'll know exactly what it is. We can put it in a description we don't need to do that here but uh, that's just text information that will be available for you to better describe what this hotspot portal's function is. Now in the redirection section here, uh, we've got a few different options. So we've got first the smart client support. Uh, we do support smart clients here. Uh, we can have it enabled to allow smart clients and regular clients or only smart clients. Uh, but smart clients as a concept and itself is a little outside the scope of what we're doing here. But we do have the ability to support it. Now this redirection and this logon URL here is to describe where we're going to send these users to provide their logon information. So we can send that to an uh, external source. Um, we can have it go somewhere, let's see, like uh, authenticate.ruckuswireless.com, for example. Uh, we could also provide a secondary. So if that primary redirection server uh, were down and we're not responding, uh, we'd roll over to the secondary service and use that as the authentication method. Now we can also go internal, and if we go internal, we can just toggle this button here. When we select internal, we're basically saying the smart zone is going to be the authenticator uh, for the client request. So they'll be redirected to the smart zone network controller. The MAC format, there are several different MAC formats that we can have the MAC address of the client be presented to the controller or to the authentication source. Uh, we'll leave it at the default for us, but these are the different uh, various ways of representing a MAC address that can be sent over to the controller. So once we've worked that out, then we have to talk about the start page. This is going to be after a user is authenticated, where are we going to send them to? So we can redirect them to the URL they were already planning to visit. Now that might be their home page or if they're re-authenticating uh, whatever page they were trying to get to when that came up. So we can redirect them wherever they were already going or we can redirect them to a specific URL. So we could put in here, uh, for example, www.ruckuswireless.com. Uh, so that's just an option we'd have here to redirect them to a specific URL. And let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, and the next option is the HTTPS redirect. So uh, this is actually uh, disabled by default, but if we turn this on, we'll, uh, the AP will attempt to redirect all the HTTPS requests to the hotspot portal in addition to just the regular HTTP. So next let's go to portal settings. 
So over here in portal settings, uh, we're going to set, we have the option to set the language of the portal and how it's going to be presented. Uh, we have several languages available here. We're going to use English for this demonstration. And then we give it a title. Uh, we can just call it, and once we've given it a title, we can give it a logo so we can browse to a logo file, some image file on our machine that's local to us. And we can upload that and that'll be the logo that's displayed on the portal. Over here we have the portal terms and condition. Uh, there's, they're filled out for you automatically. You may not want to use these terms and conditions, so the fields are editable. So you can uh, take any part of this and delete it if you wanted, uh, or you can put it back in. Whichever way you like to go with that, you have the flexibility to have the terms and conditions be whatever are, they are specific to your environment. Now let's go to the user session settings. Uh, these relate to the user's active session. So we have a session timeout that's going to time out this user's session. Once they've authenticated, uh, they'll have this number of minutes, and then they'll be basically unauthenticated, and they'll have to re-authenticate again to continue accessing network resources. And we also have a grace period. The grace period here says if they've disconnected from the network, they have this number of minutes to reconnect to the network without having to go through the entire authentication process. We have location information where we can put in location IDs and location names that are useful in some scenarios. Uh, the examples listed here will tell you some of the fields you'll need to populate or you'd like to populate if you're going to use this information. But we're not going to cover that here in this demonstration. But let's get down to the walled garden. The walled garden is what makes the hotspot portal unique. Uh, this, these are the places that we're going to allow these users to go before they've actually authenticated to the network to have full access. So basically a limited set of places will allow a user to go. Um, there are several different things we can put in here. We can put in specific IP addresses. And we can add a specific IP. We can add a range. So we can add a range of IP addresses they can get to there. Uh, we can use CIDR notation with the subnet mask. Um, we can do a full IP and mask without the CIDR notation. Uh, we can do a precise website. So we can uh, specifically allow them to go to uh, example.com, for example. Or we can do a, a, an entire domain, a website domain, by using an asterisk. So So we can go to any ruckuswireless.com website uh, by using the asterisk there. So there are a lot of different options of what you can put in here. And there's also another great feature where you can import a CSV file. So if you had a CSV file with all these addresses listed in it, uh, you wouldn't have to go plug this in for each one of your hotspot portals. Uh, you could import a CSV file and it'll import all those addresses and all those allowed uh, sites within the walled garden to be imported right in here and save you a little bit of time. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and go down here and click OK, and we'll save our hotspot portal. So it's all set. Uh, we can see it here. If we highlight it, uh, we can see some of the details of it. And if we wanted to make any changes, we'd just highlight it and click the Configure button here. But the next thing we need to do now is we need to either create a new wireless LAN or modify an existing wireless LAN to use this hotspot portal. So let's go ahead and move over here to Wireless LANs. And again, I'm logged in as a partner domain admin, so I cannot create a wireless LAN here. I need to go down to my partner domain, to the subdomain in the zone I'm in, and from here, I can go ahead and create a new wireless LAN. So like with any wireless LAN, first thing we have to do is give it a name. I'll go ahead and do that here. We'll call it Whisper Hotspot. Uh, if I click down here, it'll automatically populate that as the SSID. Um, I'll keep it in this zone. I'm going to go ahead and select a WLAN group that I want to put this in because I have this WLAN group associated with an AP group that the AP I'm using on this network is actually a member of. So I'm doing that just because of the way my lab environment is set up here. 
Now down here in authentication options, the authentication type we want to change to a hotspot or whisper portal. Once we've done that, we can still go in and modify the authentication method, but we're going to go ahead and keep that as open here. But of course, we could also use 802.1x EAP or MAC address authentication as well. So then down here at encryption options, we're going to go ahead and stick with none by default. Uh, we could use some of these others as well, but uh, just to keep this simple for our presentation, uh, we're not going to have any encryption for what it is we're trying to do here. Now we get to the hotspot portal section. So the first thing we have to select is which hotspot portal. Now we only have one configured, so it's going to show up as the default in this list. But if I had multiple hotspot portals configured, they would show up in this list and I'd select the appropriate one. If I didn't have one already configured, I could actually already hit this plus button and create one right from here. So I didn't actually have to go to service and profiles and hotspots and portals to create the hotspot portal. I could have done it right here from the WLAN, but I wanted to show you the various ways that you can get in and create these different portals. Now for the authentication service, uh, we are going to use the controller as the proxy. So we want the controller to be the proxy for the authentication request towards a radius server that I already have configured. Uh, so we'll enable that, we'll enable the realm-based profile, and I will select a server that's available in my realm-based profiles, uh, and I have a core AAA profile. So this one here, I've already pre-configured the realm-based profile uh, with this uh, AAA server for, uh, it's a radius server, that's going to authenticate the user that I'm going to show you that's going to connect to this network and authenticate and uh, show how the walled garden functionality works. So I have this radius server already set up, so we'll select that and we're ready to go. Now if we didn't already have this, again we could hit the plus button and create one and it would take us to the service and profiles authentication to create a new realm based profile. The rest of the options in this Create WLAN Configuration screen are standard wireless LAN configuration options, so I'm not going to cover them here in this presentation. If you do need information on the basics of configuring wireless LANs and some of the advanced options, take a look at the presentations that cover those topics that are part of our series that are available on our website. So we're going to go ahead and say OK here and accept our WLAN configuration. We'll see it here in our list of WLANs and allow users to connect to our hotspot portal. So this concludes this presentation covering portal authentication using hotspot wireless LANs. There are many other demonstrations detailing configuration processes and options available in SmartZone OS 5. So I hope to see you back for more presentations in the future. Thank you.